So you guys who've been watching for a while know that every year at about halfway through the year, at the halfway point, we do this weird thing where we go and take a look back at some of the best games that 2020 has had so far. Sometimes we get wrapped up in so much gaming negativity that we gotta take a look back and remind ourselves that 2020 was actually pretty good. So let's talk about 10 or so of the best games of 2020 first half, starting off with number 10. Maneater. Yeah, you probably knew we were gonna pick this game. It might seem out of left field, but we've been talking about it quite a bit, and thankfully it lived up to our weird expectations of it being essentially an open world shark action RPG. Manhunter is a ton of fun, and we think that there needs to be more games like this. Yes, it's not super long. Yes, it can be a little repetitive, but it's creative, it's cool, it's fun, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but they actually put the work in to make it satisfying to play. It's got great, hilarious narration, it's got a ton of environmental and enemy variety, especially as you travel through different areas of water and grow your shark from a little tiny baby into this killer, behemoth, nasty, prehistoric killer. All of the while kind of customizing your shark with different abilities and evolving it, it's, it's really fun. It sounds weird, but we think people should give it a try. Especially because you can even hop on land and munch on people. Like, what's better than that? This, that's a good shark game if you ask me. Now over at number nine, Gears Tactics. Yes, a game that has not been talked about too much, hasn't been mentioned much, and honestly kind of released pretty quietly. This is a surprisingly competent game. Halo fans know that a lot of people slept on Halo Wars, the RTS version of that game that was actually pretty good. Now, Gears Tactics takes the Gears of War formula and applies it to a top-down strategy shooter similar to XCOM, but with the Gears of War flair, and it actually turns out to totally work and be really cool. Using your Lancer, using your Chainsaw Bayonet actually works in the gameplay. It makes sense taking cover, hunkering down, fighting the Locust in like more of an old school Gears campaign was something that we also really liked. It's not like Gears 4 or Gears 5. It's actually more like the original Gears because you're in the heat of it. Not to mention that all your squad mates are highly customizable, way more than we expected. It's a pretty good time. It's not perfect. It's got some issues here and there, but like of the bigger tier games that released this year, we really like this one. Now over at number eight, we have a Valve game. Can you believe it or not? A Half-Life game. Can you believe it or not? Half-Life Alex is downright incredible. Yes, it does feel a little weird. Uh, to put a VR game on this list where VR hasn't taken off as much as we were hoping. Still, a lot of us here do like VR and we really loved Half-Life Alex. In fact, we wish everyone could experience it because it's downright incredible. It serves as kind of like a prequel to Half-Life 2 with you playing as Alex Vance before Gordon shows up, but you're deep in City 17 and you get to see it with your own eyes. And not only that, even though the fact that you're not playing as Gordon Freeman, the Half-Life vibe, the Half-Life gameplay, the Half-Life feel, all of that is 100% here and it made us as Half-Life fans very happy. Not to mention the story as well does some really, really cool things that you might want to check out if you have the capability. Again, we know not everyone can play this game and that is a bummer, but who boy, read a Wikipedia page or something because Half-Life Alex is cool. Now over at number seven, I think we got a highlight for you PC fans out there. Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord has finally actually released and you can play it. Yes, it's technically still more of an early access game, but you're getting way more of that awesome warfare action you come to expect, commanding massive amounts of dudes, using all types of different weapons, um, exploring and kind of enjoying more of the RPG aspects, conversing with people. There are definitely some things that still need to be built up in this game and you can tell, but like the core Mount and Blade gameplay is there, and it seems like hardcore fans are absolutely happy, and you know, we're happy for them. Next at number six, we're including The Last of Us Part Two. Yes, nobody bribed us to do that, we just genuinely like the game. We don't like it quite as much as the first game, and we can definitely admit that there's a couple of problems in the story and the gameplay, but overall, we still found it very satisfying and lengthy to play through. This time, it's like an Ellie story, and she goes out for revenge in an incredibly v bloody, violent game filled with all of like that brutal kind of survival horror aspects that The Last of Us brings with bigger environments, incredible graphics, and honestly just some really, really great performances by the voice actors and motion capture actors. Some people were let down, we were not. Agree to disagree, but let's move on over at number five and talk about Ori and the Will of the Wisps, another surprise game that uh, not enough people are talking about. Once again, I sound like I'm repeating myself, but seriously, Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a follow-up to Ori in the Blind Forest, and it's better in every way. It's downright incredible from the way you progress to the ability 
abilities you gain, to the way you traverse the environments, to the way the actual environments themselves look like pure concept art come to life, it's great. It really is something else you need to experience either on an Xbox or on a PC. We played it on PC and we loved it there. The music, the environment, the atmosphere, the touching but simple story will get you, but the gameplay will keep you there for the long haul. And I think that's important. Now over at number four, if we're talking about gameplay, Call of Duty Warzone was another surprise this year. Who would have thought another free to play battle royale game was released and it was actually pretty good. Like just as we're starting to really get tired of these types of things, Call of Duty's newest spin on it in the modern warfare engine is actually pretty good. And I think it would be weird for us to not acknowledge like the mainstream acceptance that this game has gotten uh, for good reason. It's compelling and it's fun. The loot system and the weapon system works here really well. Uh, the levels and, and just kind of the, the design of the environment, we kind of just enjoy it a bit more than Blackout, but of course everybody feels differently. Uh, just generally, we really liked Modern Warfare, especially from a single player perspective, and we really liked their spin on the whole drop in and shoot a bunch of dudes and survive till the end thing. Now down to number three, we have the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, what a dream come true this game is. After so many years of anticipation and, and just delays and not knowing what's going on, we finally got the game that we were all hoping for, at least the first part of it. Yes, this game does focus specifically only on the early sections of the original game, but they take the time to really expand it, grow it out, give more fan service, give more lore, give more background, and just create more living, breathing, and convincing worlds. It almost strengthens the story of the original game because now you can like really understand the people that live here and what's going on. Of course, thanks to also some incredibly detailed graphics that just really sell it, especially with all the main characters you're playing as, uh, but also just the fact that the story goes some places, dude. It does some things that are very interesting and it plays with fan expectations in a way that we thought was pretty fun to say the very least, but not to mention it's also just a good solid JRPG, the action, is fun, even though it is a little more action oriented, it does hold up. Upgrading your characters is satisfying and all of that is just a good time. For a lot of people, this is the first way they're gonna experience Final Fantasy VII and you know, we think that's pretty good. I think this is a good first way to experience the uh, beloved original classic, but it's even better if you love the original and now you're playing this one. Who knows how long we're gonna have to wait for the sequel to this to kind of wrap things up, you know, the second half. I don't know, but we are definitely happily going to be waiting for it. Now down to number two, we have Animal Crossing New Horizons, a game that really took the world by storm. Of course, while many people were shut inside their homes due to unforeseen and uncertain circumstances, there was a game that released just at the right time and it was pretty much there to comfort everyone and it was Animal Crossing, baby, uh, which has always been a great series, but New Horizons really blows it out of the water. It's more social, it's more detailed, it's more customizable, it's more compelling, it's more ongoing. It looks better, it's a little more engaging. Basically everything you could want from an Animal Crossing sequel they didn't screw it up. And props to Nintendo, because they really could have. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of jaded, but this is easily the best thing that Nintendo put out this year, and we're really happy it exists. And we're also really happy that it's continuing to be fun and exciting. They just announced that they're adding swimming to the game. That's crazy, dude. Still, we know that it is very much like a chill, relaxing, weird, grindy type of game that isn't for everyone. But I think just the actual cultural impact this game has made this year is really worth highlighting and celebrating, man. Now down to number one, we have Doom Eternal, which essentially takes Doom 2016, a game that we absolutely loved, and I'm pretty sure we chose it as our game of the year, and kind of just blows it all out of the water and expands upon it. It goes full insane sequel in a way that may alienate some fans of the previous game, just how over the top it goes, but for us, we loved all the additions, the new weapons, the bigger levels, more traversal abilities, just more opportunities for murder, incredible new enemy types, and a multiplayer mode that was okay. Doom Eternal really goes nuts and it just kind of goes further lengths to make the Doom guy, essentially Superman. Like he is like almost like a superhero in this story. He is just this crazy badass legend of a killing machine. And it's really cool with what they do with the lore. And generally throughout the entire game, from the bosses to the areas you visit, uh, the enemies and villains you face off against, this game is truly a thrilling, thrilling ride from beginning to end, from the music to the visuals to the insane white knuckle gameplay where you should definitely crank up the difficulty if you can once you become a seasoned vet. It's even more satisfying. Doom Eternal is kind of like the gift that keeps on giving and we love it. 
But of course, before we go, we got some bonuses as well. Uh, first, Resident Evil 3. We got to see the nemesis in 4K, and he's not pretty. Also, Neo 2 is just as good as the first one. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot we wanted to give a highlight to because it's not like the greatest thing in the world, but it is a really nice, fun way to relive a lot of your favorite sagas. And for PC fans, we had to highlight Satisfactory because I'm sure a lot of you guys are definitely addicted to that. But those are some of the games that we really liked in the first half of 2020. Of course, we didn't have enough time to cover smaller games, so we'd love to hear any other recommendations you have down in the comments. Maybe we can make some other videos highlighting those. Anyway, if you have your own top 10 of games that you've played the first half of 2020, let us know. Anything at all, we'd love to hear from me, but clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We always say it, but we do really appreciate it. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. Yep. As always, though, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.